Hello, ladies and gentlemen out there in Radio Land. This is Those Muckrakers coming to you live once again through the power of the internet. I'm Pat. I'm Pete. I'm Bobby. And this is episode 116. In today's episode, tell them what we'll be doing, Pete. Uh, let's see. We got a little bit of uh, women's reproductive rights, some uh, Israeli-Palestinian stuff, and uh, the... What is I'm sorry. What is what is the, what's the word now for the January sixth insurrection? What are they calling it now? Oh, it was, uh, it, was it was a tour. It was a tour of the capital. It, it, it was just capital. a a, t- a tourist event, hardly even worth yeah. mentioning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna focus on those. It's gonna be fun. Um, fun I'm fun. all I'm all full of hatred and anger because uh, I don't know if you can see it. If you're listening, you can't, and if you're watching, you might can't. There's a book I have called. The right out of California, and it's about the uh, beginning Written of the by modern the predator. True story. <laughs> it's a. Uh, it's about the uh, beginning of the conservative movement that started in the 30s. Turns out the conservative movement was always terrible. Both parties um, embraced progressivism in like the early 1900s, but the the uh, modern progressive movement abandoned progressivism when the uh, rich people were fighting unionization uh in in in, uh, farmers and then when when we finally got around to nixon they realized that they could completely abandon progressivism and they could gain a whole new electorate by uh catching the democrats the dixiecrats that left the democratic party the southern strategy yeah that basically a bunch of people left the uh, democratic party because they were mad about integration so they were Mm -hmm. like boom we got it (laughs) as as soon as lbj signed good Oh, sorry. Yeah, there's also a, um, a a foreign policy component to it, basically leading to sort of America's soft power imperialism turning into like you know like like Teddy Roosevelt, and then we get Woodrow Wilson. Oh my God! Later, who is just absolutely it's uh, if you've never seen it, check out the cynical historian's two part YouTube series on Wilson. He was a crazy person. He was, yeah, and he kind of died for a minute there while president, and then his wife just kind of ran the country. They actually talked him out of, like, after he had a massive stroke, they were like, Wilson, they they talked him into retiring, and his wife said, fuck you, he's not retiring. And then he was like, I guess I got to do what she says. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) No, they sent, the Senate sent someone to check on him, and they basically weakened at Bernie's him in the bed. Like yeah. going, oh no! Look, the president's fine. He's just resting. We'll he do, has stroke, you guys. We'll, He's fine though. We'll do a whole Amazing. episode. We'll do a whole episode on Wilson one day. Um, by the way, my new favorite president, uh, post Wilson, my new favorite president, by the way, is Warren G. Harding. Oh, for, um, for what? Warren G. Harding, when they elected him, <laughs> he's basically a self-aware Trump. He goes, there's except less evil and cruel. Where Warren G. Harding goes, guys, I'm from a small town. Don't elect me. I'm not good for this. And then he, they talk to his he's wife. He's aware that he can't do it. He can't do the job at all. He knows it. They still like him anyway. They talk to Everyone his wife. His, his wife quoted, she goes, uh, listen, if you elect my husband, the only word that's going to be remembered from his administration is tragedy. <laughs> his own wife to the press. And I then, of course, know. he was a terrible president. And he told you he was going to be a bad president. Um yes. But anyway, uh, so which which one do we want to get into first? We want to talk about women's reproductive rights, the insurrection, or the... Oh, well, uh, I, I did, because you just talked about a book you were reading. I was going to say a companion to that that you might want to check out. Maybe the listeners and viewers want to check out as well on the foreign policy component of, like, that same era of, like, the party starting to flip and basically, like, the, the fomentation of the Republican Party is, uh, is a book. Oh, God, I forget who it's by, but it's called Tomorrow the World. And it's basically about how America, through soft power and then later, you know, concrete superpower nation building bullshit, uh, you know, how, you know, here's, here's how we got here. Let's take a look at what we got yeah. is, the, is the back half of the book. Well, up, and, up until, I feel like really up, in, up until the, like the 1930s, I feel like the parties were a little bit more fluid, but then after, after the thirties and, and the great depression, um, and especially leading into like Nixon and stuff and like LBJ. Well, well, getting into getting into like Nixon and LBJ and like Kennedy was kind of the genesis of it. I wouldn't call Kennedy a neoliberal. That wasn't really a thing yet. But the Chicago school and sort of like what we today Catholic would call, yeah, like today what we would call the um, like econ one hundred and one. 
you know, right. oh, well, you, you can't do a workers cooperative because it hasn't worked in this one particular case. So it's clearly not ever going to work, you know, um, or, you know, yeah. unionism is bad for the union members, actually, that kind of bullshit that yeah, led us they, to the liberalism and Reagan. Yeah, they and still try to keep doing that now. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's all, you know, the, the Chicago school is basically what started that off. It was a whole bunch of people who looked at who looked at, you know, real politic and actual Keynesian economics and went, nah, we shouldn't be doing any of this. It's going to lead to another Great Depression. What we need is to believe in the free hand of the market and that growth will be perpetual. Yeah. All they want to do is businesses want to squeeze every last dime out of their workers that they can possibly get. And their propaganda works too. I'm always hearing about factory workers who have union members come in and say, would you like to join a union? We'd be able to get you all this stuff. And they're like, union fees, we don't want any of that. And they push them out because they've been uh, programmed to believe that the union just saps money from them for no reason. And so they don't want it. Walmart is the largest employer in, I want to say, 32 states. If Walmart's retail workers and their warehouse workers were unionized and they were a hostile union, they could grind the American economy to a halt overnight. And Walmart knows that. And that's why they spend so much money on, you know, anti-unionizing. Well, and, we'll and actually do, we'll actually do a whole future episode on this because that was that book right out of California started with the, the, um, the farm workers union in California. And that's where the current Republican conservative movement honed the tools that they use today is they learned a lot of lessons from crushing the farm workers union during the great depression. And then they took yeah. that back with them. And that's kind of been their platform ever since. Yeah. And it's sort of like this. So this like unholy union between that started around Lincoln's time between like uh, um, industrialists and capitalists with the Republican party that has given us the party we have today. Yeah. Um, both of our parties right. have been garbage for a very long time, but at least the Democrats pay lip service to doing yeah. the right thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, hundred percent. The I Democrats was... at least like, they're at least saying the right things, which lets people they're know that this is the right things yeah. that I, I that... was, I was yelling about this too. Um, one of the things that I hate about the conservative movement is that I'm going to, you know, like when the, there's a the fascism that, yeah, there, well, there's a mentality that like when I'm in charge, fuck you. But when I'm not in charge, I'm going to poison the fucking well any way I can. Cause fuck you. I when just I'm don't in charge, yeah. fuck you. And when I'm not in charge also, fuck. You. Yeah. I just like, don't see right. that. I don't see that from the, uh, the liberal movement. I've never seen any, any liberal movement going, I'm going to burn oh. the whole country down because fuck oh. you. Cause I'm not in power. It's it's Sunday, May twenty third, and guess what? You remember how oh, for for a month now, Joe Manchin and other moderate Democrats read Republicans who can't get elected as Republicans. Um, we're, we're saying, oh, we, we want to do infrastructure, but we have to scale this back. We need Republican votes. So Joe Biden scaled back his infrastructure plan, putting a shit ton of stuff in jeopardy. And oh, yeah, this morning, Mitch McConnell said, yeah, we're not going to do that skinny plan. Yeah, exactly. So it was not, all for fucking nothing. Not, the last no, month meant fucking nothing. That's nothing. It's like that's, they have to learn this lesson time and time and time again. That that's one of my biggest problems. Are not going to give you a win, not a yeah. single fucking win. They don't have. You just, can't just work with them. The They'll always say, we're going to work with us, but they don't. No. That was the big thing that uh, the big problem I had with Obama was that he wasted his first two years in office trying to negotiate with Republicans. That's like trying to uh. negotiate with terrorists. You're never going to get what you want. You're never going to be able to appease them enough. And that's why Obamacare ended up being the shit show that it is. Instead yeah. of it being yeah. free for everyone, it still costs money Speaking. because he was trying to meet the Republicans halfway. So instead, the Republicans pretended like yeah. this was never our idea. This was never our bill. This is always Obama's idea. When it started as a Republican idea for health care, but because the Democrats think it's a good idea, now they have to pretend like they think it's a bad idea. The Republicans are Lucy with the football, and this is what drives me crazy about the current liberal movement. We, are Charlie, Charlie, Brown. we are Charlie Brown every fucking time, and I'm like, stop! They're going to keep moving the football! You're never going to get the, kick the football. Uh, speaking of that, that's a really Never good... work with them. Never work with them. Crush them. Crush the filibuster. Don't let McConnell have anything. Ignore the stupid turtle as he putters around. Well, that's that's a, actually a really good um, uh, segue to get into women's, women's, women's reproductive Weeman. rights. Women, women's, you know, women's uh, reproductive rights today. There's a uh, court and case. And better to talk about women than we men. Then, yeah, than we men. It's in the title. We men talk about <laughs> women. We men. We men. 
Um, Good Lord. <laughs> listen, I know a lot of women in my life. I like a lot of women in my life. I have a lot of respect. My of mother is a woman. My, my <laughs> mother, my wife is a woman. Um, so there's a Supreme Court case going forward, uh, which is what the conservatives have been angling for this whole time. They've been setting up, they've been baiting, they've been setting up these little laws. They want to get a court case to go to the Supreme Court. They've been working on stacking the Supreme Court in their favor because they, they want do. to be able to say, like, we stopped they abortion. It off. Yeah. So now there's a Supreme Court case going <laughs> forward um, on Monday, actually, and it will review uh, whether all state laws that ban pre-viability abortions are unconstitutional. Uh, so really, this could kind of like, I guess, reverse Roe versus Wade, which is interesting because Roe versus Wade doesn't matter anymore. People are still teaching Roe versus Wade. There's actually I actually just taught this in high school the other day. Um, there's a court case called Planned Parenthood versus Casey, which said that states can pass certain abortion not full out bans, but they can pass things on abortion as long as it's not an undue burden on women seeking abortions. Uh, what is an undue burden, you may ask? Who fucking knows? Because they didn't define any, that. Honestly, I'd say any restrictions whatsoever. Uh, well, they wanted to leave it open to the states. So states are doing all manner of fuckery. Um, and so now they have this court case, which as best I can understand, and Bobby, feel free to jump in and correct me at any point. This court case seems like it's probably going to go to just telling the states that they have full license to pass whatever abortion uh, bans or not bans that they want, right? Well, I, I I don't know. With the Trump era, the makeup of the Supreme Court has changed radically, which was part of the reason to bite your tongue and vote for Hillary Clinton. Right. But we're past that. We're, we're past that. And a lot of people have come around to the Oh, holy shit. Both parties are not identical to one another. Yes, they're yeah. both neoliberal capitalist fuck faces, but it's not both sides are the same. All the people that are like both sides, yeah. that's just the right saying both sides so that they can yeah. uh, suppress certain yeah. votes, discourage certain votes. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. always Burn been propaganda. And, and, and the burnout is real. But uh, anyway, the. Um, I, I genuinely don't know what this Supreme Court is going to do, but it is definitely a Supreme Court that is now packed to the gills with ideologues who oh, here, uh, I get it. pay attention I get it. to constitutionality, who don't pay attention to, um, like, this is the, the Republicans constantly claiming uh, the Supreme Court should not be legislating from the bench. They've just installed three justices who are totally cool with legislating from the bench. So the decision, yeah, it, uh, it's, so, yeah. so the decision. Uh, it's a year after the court struck down a Louisiana law that required doctors who perform abortions to have the right to admit patients at a nearby hospital. Which In is case, fucking insane. Right, because a lot of times abortion is just a pill, like it's not an actual surgery. Yeah. Um, oh, so, yeah. Uh, pill. so they struck that down. Uh, the Mississippi legislature passed a law uh, in 2018 because, um, by the way, Mississippi only has one abortion clinic left or one clinic that can – um basically one licensed abortion provider in the state uh they passed this in law fact, in louisiana neither of our planned parenthoods we have two planned parenthoods one in baton rouge one in new orleans at least at last check i don't know if they're both still That's, open but doesn't sound like they enough. actually don't perform abortions but all both of the planned parenthoods in louisiana do not perform abortions and upon telling a conservative this fact it is a fact they said, oh, well, I mean, but there are Planned Parenthoods that do nothing but abortions. And I was that's like, no, not that, right that, either. That, like, like the like fucking at, I think at most, I think at most Planned Parenthoods perform about like 4% of their business is abortions. I think like, sometimes that's so, hardly a thing that they do at all. I think sometimes the problem with the Supreme Court is in a, in, in a fear of legislating from the bench, they leave the door open and don't rule conclusively so like yeah you know roe versus wade left the door open like a little bit they said that like a woman's right to privacy in this medical thing is only balanced by the state's right to legislate conserving life basically the state's saying no sir you can't do that with a rusty hanger right so like the yeah. state can be like oh no you need to clean your tools not just in bourbon of course the states ran with that and then um uh, Casey versus Planned Parenthood basically saying, oh, you know, the states can kind of just do whatever they want as long as it's an undue burden, but did not defining undue burden is kind of them going, 
we're gonna rule on it, but we're not actually gonna rule on it. You get, we're gonna yeah. kick the can down the road. On oh, how to, weird. To, to a time some to some time in the future where everything has calmed down and yeah. people can think rationally about this. Like, so we're gonna, <laughs> yeah. So now we're now can meet down road. Here we are. Yeah. Um, ultimately, what I think would happen if they if they basically repeal Roe versus Wade. Um, is that it's just going to go back to if you live in a non-abortion state, I'm sorry, go fuck yourself. Um, I don't think it's going to make abortion illegal in all 50 states. I don't think that's possible. Yeah. That would be something Congress would have to do, which God fucking Congress is not going to do shit on that. Oh, Nobody. yeah, they're, they're, they're not touching that. It's, yeah. it's nuclear. Absolutely so nuclear. Yeah, what do they call it? Like the third rail of politics? Some, yeah. um, well, some... and that, that's the point of keeping abortion in the spotlight for Republicans is so that they have this really hot wire third rail bullshit thing to stand on. Uh, most of these politicians mm -hmm. and even some of the hey. activists don't fucking care. Oh, no, no, the... they, they, they do not care. I see the propagandists like using that as a tool too. Like if mm -hmm. you try to talk about uh, gun safety, they say, "Oh, now Democrats care about lives. What about abortions?" It's like I'm not yeah, talking that, about that, that. That's the purpose. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it yeah. works really, really well for them though, because it's great for disrupting conversations. Yeah, you know what well, about yeah, what about that, what about I mean, WIC and hire out the other person? That's the about, entire. It's not to what, prove a point. What about yeah. welfare for children and stuff? Ah, you shouldn't have had a baby if you couldn't take care of it. Well, I tried to take care of it, and you made it illegal, and now I'm trying to take yeah. care of it, and you also don't. Well, and what really, what really yeah. fucking goads me are the people who are both anti-abortion and anti-contraception, because at that point you're lying when you say I believe that life begins at conception. No, sir, you believe that life begins at arousal. So, <laughs> yeah, no. But I by mean, the way, that's, that's an amazing action. Trojan commercial. By the way. Like what? if you want to sell Trojans, I think to like religious people be like Trojan condoms. Life begins at arousal. Yeah, and then you have oh. the, the the Catholic Church who has basically stated that wearing a condom is in and of itself a sin. Not not having sex with the condom, but it, it just is basically wearing one is a sin. Listen, it, listen, man. As long as you fuck an altar boy without using protection, you're fine. Oh, yeah. No, the Catholic Church will hide you to yeah. keep you from authorities. Unless yeah, you wore a but, condom while you were molesting that child. And then, that is, in which case, you will incite God's wrath. Yeah, exactly. for certain. Yeah. Do you ever yeah. think that if, because uh, um, I don't know what I am, I'm definitely, I'm not an atheist, but I'm definitely, I don't like organized religion, but there is a God. Do you ever think he just looks down and goes, what the fuck? Like constantly? I think that he would be busy taking care of his favorite children, the aliens that are actually smart enough to travel <laughs> from their planets to our planet and fuck with our um, our jet fighters by being little fuzzy dots in the distance. Like, yeah, there's yeah. just another civilization that's like your older brother that does well, and he's just like, I'm yeah, just going to be like Jimmy over there. Yeah, I'm just going to focus on planet Jimmy. They're doing great. They got contraception figured out. <laughs> <laughs> They're not killing each other over oil. You know what? I'm going to forget that I have a second civilization that's all fucked up. You know, you killed your other brother, my other son. Y'all murdered him, so. Yeah. That's actually one thing I've kind of wondered. Does Palestine have oil? Is that what this is about? Like, what's happening? So um, let's, yeah, let's go into Palis the Israel-Palestine thing. Uh, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's you know, uh, 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 a bunch of white American dudes. We're really going to solve this one. I, I, mm -hmm. I wanted to talk about, so... Uh, not necessarily the conflict, but just sort of some some framing around it that I think a, a lot of people need to fucking understand is that are the Palestinians from that area? No. Are the Jews currently living in Pal in in Judeo Palestine in the country of Israel? Are they also from there? No. This whole conversation of it's the ancestral homeland of the Jews. It is the ancestral homeland of Judaism. So, like, just this past week, video uh, video was put out. I I, I saw it through uh, Hassan Abi, uh, his uh, his great Twitch streamer, by the way. But he also has a YouTube channel where he uh, put, puts Twitch uh, clips from his Twitch streams. Uh, was talking about this. There's this video of of uh, an Arab Palestinian woman, and it's in her backyard, and she's shouting at this man, this Jewish man, and he responds to her in a Long Island accent. 
She's going, you cannot sit. This is my house. You are stealing my house. And he says, well, if I don't do it, some, uh, you know, in this Long Island accent, if I don't do it, someone is. And Vice fucking found the guy and interviewed him. And he's this ultra right wing nationalist settler guy from Long Island. You're not yeah. from the Middle East, dude. You're from fucking Long Island. It's it's like, basic. It's and the uh, whole the whole uh well, if you criticize the actions of the IDF, the Israeli Defense Force, uh clearly you are anti-Semitic. No yeah. motherfucker. I it, that's like saying that's like saying if I were to criticize the uh the Biden administration that makes me a race traitor against white people. That yeah. doesn't make any sense. <laughs> so, like, so the, the so the way that it's broken down for me is basically so like if you're Palestinian and you're living there, they the Palestinians have to have somebody apparently house sit when you go to the market because if not there's a rule that israeli settlers can come in and claim your house it's oh, i hadn't heard of that oh That's it's one it's 100 oh, yeah. exactly if you think about the south during the height of jim crow just take the palestinians uh, uh, like a make, black guy leaves his house to go get groceries and a white guy could just move in and are be you like, my house now. are you telling me that during jim crow that a white man couldn't do that because I bet they could actually. He fucking well, could. It, during Jim Crow, it was uh, that uh, we we already had segregation. The yeah. white guy would not have wanted to live in the neighborhood that the black people were in. Like that was that was specific. What the Israeli mm -hmm. government is currently doing is straight up ethnic cleansing. Yeah, they are. They're, they, they're they are moving. Yeah, everything they can it do. Is, it, is, it is illegal under international law. It has been condemned by the United Nations and by multiple other. And and it's all so so there there are. Israeli citizens who are like, and a lot of people here in America like to paint this as Muslims versus Jews. It's not. You know there why, are though? a ton of Palestinian Christians. There are Orthodox Jewish Palestinians. There are there are Arab Muslim Israeli citizens. I can like, tell you. It, I can tell you the exact reason why we're involved the way we are. It's because the conservatives are using it as a way to court the psycho evangelicals that think that oh, yeah. you're, su you're supposed to support the Jews. Because uh, it's going to bring about the end of the world and the it's rapture. It's going to bring about the end of the world. I yeah. swear to Christ, yeah. that's why mm -hmm. they're doing that. Yeah. yeah, like it's under the surface, but they fully fucking believe they're like a oh, death yeah. cult. No, 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 no. Was the, the Jews uh, get their temple back? That's uh, the apocalypse, Gigi. With, yeah. yeah, yeah. With with the Trump administration, it was on full display with these spiritual advisors he kept around him. These are people that that Republican presidents before had kept at an arm's length. Like, okay, yeah, I'll take their votes, but I'm not going to like have them in the White House and saying that uh, God spoke through them that I should be elected. But Trump fully fucking embraced it. Why? Because he believed it? No, because he's a fucking narcissist. Yeah. Because he's a fucking narcissist and these people were telling him that he was essentially the second coming. Did he believe that he was? No, probably not. He probably didn't care. What he cared about was, oh, there's a person in this room telling me wonderful things about myself. But it's, and it's, it has <laughs> fed the fucking monster. But it's straight up, it's, <laughs> it is straight up apartheid. The, mon That's the not, monster stole Bobby. He's been there's, eaten by the there's boys. No, there's <laughs> no other fucking, there's no other way to look at it. It's apartheid. It's the, the group that has power, wants complete power, and they want to push this group of people out, and they're going to destroy them any way they can. Well, well, and here's, here's also the thing is, like, people are like, you know, pe people in America especially, they don't understand, like, this is and, – and I was trying to find the article, but it was a, 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 a deputy mayor of, like, a section of Tel Aviv. Like, Tel Aviv is actually a fairly liberal, fairly leftist place. Um uh, and it, it's reflected in their in their local governance. Um, there there was a mayor, uh, a deputy mayor of a section of Tel Aviv, because Tel Aviv is like it, there's there's like you know, um, I guess boroughs. Basically, Tel Aviv absorbed neighboring towns and suburbs and stuff right. over the years. And um, well, one of one of their deputy mayors, who was like this democratic socialist guy, he was like, "Yeah, what the national government is doing to Palestine is a fucking war crime. It is fucking genocide, and it will only lead to more and more bloodshed because what we're doing is we're weaponizing mm -hmm. our holidays and their holidays, and it is absolutely zero. Mis there was no mistake that the Israeli." <gasps> Is the Israeli police invading the Al Aska Mosque on the eve of Jerusalem Day, which is an ultra right wing nationalist uh, uh, Israeli holiday, celebrating uh, because they want all of Jerusalem back, and and it's 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 um, it's uh, it, it's totally to 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 drum up fear or nationalist fervor.
And they're doing that's, it with that's the only reason to do it. The thing that makes me even matter is they're doing it with my fucking tax money. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. I'm I'm 100 yeah. percent like, you know what? Fucking do it with your own fucking money. And everyone's like, why they're our only ally in the Middle East. No, not really. Not, they're not really our not, friends. Not really. I mean, Saudi Arabia is right fucking there. Yeah. Like the Israelis don't really give a shit. Stop giving money to the fucking IDF and see how fucking much they're your friend. You yeah, know what I mean? Exactly. Like it'd be like if you were on the bus do I, and I gotta give a kid my lunch and money every we're day. Back. And we're back to foreign policy. <laughs> yeah. If I fucking, if I got to give a kid on the bus my lunch money every day, is he really my friend? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. See how fucking yeah. quickly he likes me when I stop giving my lunch money. Yeah. <laughs> fucking st- stop giving him money to fucking murder people. Like, the, the, stop entertaining any idea of a fucking two-state solution. Like, at least in my opinion, Bobby, while I don't know if you guys are two-state solutions or not, but I'm like, it should be fucking one state. Everybody should just be fucking one thing. You all fucking live here. Treat everybody equally. Stop trying to create a whole segmented society yeah uh like the whole two-state solution reminds me of um kind of reminds me of what uh malcolm x was thinking there uh, oh the yeah the, 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 the like the ethno states right and like yeah. uh, as awesome as malcolm x was like i didn't really think that that was going to work out too well because it's what the south tried to do too like push the black people out and just be like separate but equal well, but right up against each other what's interesting and is malcolm x actually rough. changed his mind after visiting mecca of all places um once he saw well, that yeah the rest so he of saw the, that that shit doesn't work yeah he saw that once the rest of the world didn't give a shit so much about colorism as the way the united states did he was like shit maybe that's not the way yeah so just merge it at this point like it sucks for the palestinians that the jews were like uh for or other people forced them to accept the jews like right next door so now it sucks they have to merge in with them but that i just don't see it i don't ever see a two-state solution working well because and it can't work because no one's ever going to agree where the border should be exactly they're keep going to keep pushing it back we go back to the 19 what was it 1950 i thought it was 1949 we need to well, make there, there's a series of different borders like what, yeah it's, yeah what we need to do is we need to bomb a neighborhood in britain every time somewhere in palestine or israel is bombed so like israel the idea of britain bomb a neighborhood in texas <laughs> <laughs> i just want the people responsible which is great britain the uk oh, yeah. i, I yeah, believe yeah. you said they're doing it with your tax money so it might be like Listen, sections of yeah. your kitchen get blown up every all i'm time. trying to say it's my tax money i'd much rather <laughs> my tax money go to bombing a neighborhood in britain um blow up the well, fucking it's 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 i mean it's probably just the, the 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 anarchist in me but man like seriously fuck borders yeah mm-hmm. like no, we've always said on this it, podcast borders are for cowards yeah. borders are violence yeah. borders are violence yeah Sorry. Why the fuck can't I just go where I want to go? We got to know who's yeah. in there. Why do you need to know my fucking business, man? Y'all don't know who's in there now. Like, <laughs> do, you, do you think you know every person that lives in the U.S., Mexico, and Canada right now? Of course not. I don't but even I mean, know it's, everyone it's, who lives also, in my building. But yeah. I mean, it's also like like borders as we have them today are an extremely recent development in yeah. human society. Like, you know, it, it it's sort of like... Uh, and I, it is one of the things that I do like about the European Union is that is the Schengen area where they just kind of take a meh approach to borders. And even countries that aren't in the European Union, like Switzerland and I believe Norway, they're in the Schengen area. You know, why, why not have something like that? But then um, the very moment that a Palestinian kid throws a rock at a Mercedes with a yellow license plate, uh, which, by the way, is is a sign that the uh, that that the Israelis that the Israeli state and the occupied Palestinian lands are an apartheid state. Is that Israelis get yellow license plates and yeah. can go anywhere that they want. Palestinians get green license plates, which means they're prohibited from going pretty much anywhere. Some of them so, are trapped in their own fucking neighborhoods. If you take like, a wow. cab, if you take a cab yeah, over Gaza there. is an open air prison and don't let anybody yeah. tell you when you fucking If you take a cab, I've, I've been reading about this. If you take a cab, a Palestinian cab, it takes you to a certain point and then the cab has to be like, sorry, we can't go any further or they'll fucking kill me. Uh, yeah. Now you got to stop. A Palestinian and then... kid will throw a rock at a car with a with a yellow license plate, and then the IDF, of course, has to murder 500 Palestinians from the air. I like, like people. That's, that's how this I goes like, down. I like it's... people's arguments too. They're like, "How about Hamas? Stop launching missiles from hospitals." I'm like, "Does that mean you should blow up the hospital?" Yeah, I've I've never heard anybody in a hostage situation be like, "Well, he took hostages, so we killed him and all the hostages." 
Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, no, no, no. It's exactly like it's exactly like if your kid threw a brick off an overpass, and then I decided that even though it didn't hurt me, I decided I'm going to go to your house, I'm going to blow up your fucking house, murder you and your entire family, kill most of your neighbors, and then burn the rest of the neighborhood down. Yeah. Because your kids shouldn't have thrown a brick off that overpass. And like, then blow up the Earth, Earth, so nothing will ever grow again. Response. And then blow up CNN headquarters because they also blew up the Associated Press building. Yeah. Why? Why the fuck not? Why the yeah, fuck not? Why not? Like, why, seriously, why not? working with journalists, I, I work with journalists every day, seeing the AP Al Jazeera building get literally demoed on site by one missile was fucking chilling. And that was the point of it. That yeah. was the point of that attack. There, there was no yeah. Palestinian resistance fighters or whatever the fuck in that building. Oh, they were like, they, they said uh, the, the Palestinians... It was the Israeli government sending the message to journalists, if you fuck with us, we will attempt to murder you. They they were like, oh, well, we gave them an hour to get out of the building. Then you also gave any potential insurgents an hour to get out of the building. Why blow up the building? They said Hamas. Send a message to journalists. And in Trump's ideal world, that would happen to uh, any news organization that's not 100% loyal to him. Because he sees things like that one journalist getting chopped up, and he's cool with it. He doesn't care. uh, Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. Oh, I don't no, know what we can they do. They said that actual, there was there, there, was, there was a Hamas a Hamas intelligence office in the building. So no, well, it's, of, it, it, but it's an actual fucking Donald Trump quote where he said, you know, the lying press back. To, oh, excuse me, that was that was Hitler's line. The lying press, the fake news media, uh, which is which is totally not a dog whistle to neo Nazis. Uh, the fake news media. Uh, you know what? We can't do anything about it. Well, I guess. Well. Maybe some of you Second Amendment people Paper can. Press. Are you, you know, fucking kidding me? I think Are you fucking goes, kidding me? Are you telling your supporters to shoot journalists you disagree with? Yeah, I think like his, his, he literally sold shirts at his rally that said, you know, uh, journalist tree wrote uh, some assembly required. I think uh-huh. this 100% uh-huh. they, and they had back to, keep, to the... At his, I'm sorry, in the 2015 rallies especially, they would have cages in the uh, the back for the journalists to hide in because all the people in the audience would be around it, like threatening them, hitting the bars. Oh, like yeah. They were literally like locked up for their protection because uh-huh. Trump was telling everyone they're the, they're the bad guys, folks. They're the ones you should hate. They're the ones you should kill. And I, I think this yep. is, this is why they hate journalists. Fascists this, hate yeah. journalists. This is why they blew up the AP building the idea yeah. up because i think it goes 100 percent back to we just had four years of a president going fuck journalists i'm gonna have police go out to protest and specifically target journalists because fuck them and i think that like the idf and netanyahu have been like oh man we don't have to put up with these journalists anymore reporting on us fuck them and that's where we're at right now it's open season on fucking journalists yeah well you want to tell us about the january 6 uh tour of the capitol <laughs> That's a uh, an interesting segue. So speaking of Trump's ideal world, um, his failed uh, insurrection against the United States, his failed attempt to to steal the election on January sixth, when Biden was being you know declared the official president. And at that point, it was purely ceremonial; like he was already going to be Which president. It's, it's weird that they were like, if we fuck with the vote count, they won't be able to like. They really believe in this magical idea that like. Like if I eat the contract, the contract's no longer valid. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Like if yeah. I break into the Capitol where they're certifying votes for Biden, there were, and there, and, there and were I, so many people, there were so many people on inauguration day who were like amazed that it was happening. Yeah. Like conservative TikTok went fucking nuts that day, man. That like was wonderful to read, actually. It was like, really, really funny. It was fucking wild. Like people legitimately thought like Trump was going to swoop in in a Black Hawk helicopter, gun down the entire Biden family, they, in, including they thought it was Hunter gonna cut. Biden. But yeah. like you know, um, they thought it was going to cut to black and then cut back on with uh, everyone, Obama included, being escorted away in handcuffs, and then Trump would yeah. take the stage triumphantly, ready to be sworn back in again. Yeah, as yeah. His, yeah. No, as no. his loyal supporters ate love- the ballots. Because I eating do. the ballots is a symbol. It, 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 we're all, everything's, it's the same way when cops pull these people over and they're just like, according to Article 52, verse 4 of, um, wait, why are you pulling out your pepper to spray? Psalms 8, this can't yeah. be happening. Like, no, yeah, no, no, but my like, favorite, my favorite thing about the, the, the Trump family, uh, like, the well, conservative media's obsession with Hunter Biden mm-hmm. is that motherfucker fucks. 
like seriously that man does crack he <laughs> literally does crack he doesn't do cocaine like the other millionaire kids in his trust fund neighborhood he does crack that's a man of the people all right yeah, also yeah, that's nice cock anyway yes. but like i'm sorry back to the january 6th hey insurrection. hey listen mary sorry, barry got capital. elected how many times who did what I said Marion Barry, the mayor of DC, that like got caught like on camera in a sting smoking crack with like a sex worker. I think got reelected like three times. Well, there was that nuts, That's there was right. that nuts though guy who ran Toronto for a while. Remember yeah, that Robert, guy? was it Robert Ford? Yeah, uh, Ford, Rob yeah, Ford. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, back back to this lovely, uh, lovely guided so, tour of the Capitol building. So we we had been knowing that the tour is coming for a long time because whenever <laughs> the first time he was running, he said in his debate against Hillary, you know, I'll accept the results of the election when I win or if I win. Yeah. And so we knew that he was the type that would never accept the results. And so he spent months after the election just prattling on about how it's you know it was rigged, folks. He Which was fired these crazy people up to believe that it was won. stolen, so they would want to steal it back. There's a problem yeah. with dictators when they win. Uh, oh yeah, even, that's right. He said that both times, actually. Even uh, even whenever he won, he spent months talking about how millions of people voted illegally. This time around, he lost, so of course he's going to do the same thing. You know, it's like if you watch these dictators when they win a rigged election, they always win like ninety-seven percent, yeah, or ninety-eight point nine percent of the vote because in their minds, or the ninety-seven is just suspicious. Yeah, having having one percent makes them look like a man of the people, whereas you know what I mean. Oh, hundred percent, that would be crazy. But I won 99.9% .9 of the vote because that's a thing that could happen fucking anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, which, yeah. That, well, well, it maybe, it Ron, it, maybe if Ronald Reagan was running, but. It, it did It did happen in a town, I believe it was in either South Dakota or North Dakota. Probably South Dakota because North Dakota doesn't exist. But um, <laughs> Like birds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, no, there's, there's a town as somewhere out past the Midwest, but before the Rockies, that's like, they have a dog for a mayor and he wins like 90% of the vote every single time. And it's, uh. you know, the dog is like 14 and it's been mayor th for like three terms or something. So yeah. Just, to me, that's, that is my ultimate um, anarchist fantasy. You have a dog as mayor because you don't need a fucking mayor because of town, everyone does its fucking job. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So uh, anyway, January 6th, the insurrection happened. Uh, we're still hunting down the people that uh, actually breached the Capitol building. Yeah, but if are. you watch it, like people died. They were armed. They found pipe bombs afterwards. They were trying to lure police away so that they could actually strategically cut through. Uh, they had planned this in advance. Uh, some of the Congress people actually worked with them to give them guided tours uh, ahead of time so they would know where everyone is. They knew what they were doing. This was well planned. Yeah, a lot of them were idiots. Most of them were idiots, but they're still idiots with the plan, with the purpose. They've been brought together. Yeah. Yeah, never underestimate the power of stupid people in large numbers you know well the thing is you, yeah, and you, some, you of the people, a... some of the people that that went into the capitol building that day were definitely not in on the plan but their presence yeah. was part of the plan yeah you yeah. go yeah. in with a large group those people are fodder you know what i mean yeah. they're they yeah. don't need to cannon know the fodder plan. yeah they're cannon fodder what your job to do is to plant the pipe bombs to create havoc mm -hmm. you know what i mean you execute the plans they just go in and create a rabble that's their whole yeah. their whole point so now that it's over, you would imagine that the same party, because because Americans died during this attack on American oh, soil, American, the most American. American of American soil. It's not just like uh, a foreign embassy. This is the Capitol building. So you would imagine the same party that investigated Benghazi eleven times would want to investigate this. Let's this say is once. this is the equivalent but, of an eagle sanctuary at the top of one of the buildings. Uh, on 9-11 being destroyed. You know what I mean? Like a bald eagle sanctuary was destroyed by terrorists trying to kill our freedom. That's how sacred these people act like this is. And so uh, there was a bill that was supposed to investigate the January 6th riots. It passed the, the House with like 30 Republicans voting yes on it. So we thought, oh, okay, so maybe this actually stands a chance. It gets to the Senate, and Mitch McConnell's like, and it dies. It dies. Like, they won't let it through because they don't want to investigate it because that might affect their chances in two years when the midterms come up. They don't want to, people to be talking about this then. And like, look, this is going to, if they did investigate it, it's going to produce like a 400 page report that none of Trump's supporters are ever going to read. It's not going to cost them any votes. Let's just do this to actually make, you know, America oh, safer. Yeah, if, but they, they don't yeah, want to do it. They don't want to do it. 
as if as if Fox News would cover it at all. Do you know what Fox News not. would cover? I mean, the, the House is going to launch a commission anyway, so they're, Fox oh, News good. is going to cover this. But what they're going to cover is uh, they're just going to try to find dirty laundry on everybody who's on the commission. Mm-hmm. That's all they're going to do. Like, or, or they'll cut away to like what types of mustard some store that Sean Hannity goes to serves. Oh, or, yeah. or yeah. God forbid, Biden wear a, oh, shark, yeah. a gray shark skin suit. Because I don't know if yeah. you guys remember fucking suit gate. Obama yeah, the, wore a tan suit. Tan suit. Oh, man. I remember that one time he too. asked for mustard and Sean Hannity was like, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. President. Here's your fancy mustard. And he had like a whole segment on that. It was wonderful. The, the, the dirt they had on uh obama back then yeah but, again yeah, again so. i i the conservatives have only made me love hunter biden even more the man smokes crack i do agree crack is the people's drug you know what i mean like if you're a fucking red-blooded fucking factory working american what do you smoke meth or crack yeah no, no, no. Of, and i love uh, and i love the whole thing of like uh he slept with his dead brother's wife i'm like uh, Donald Trump fucked a porn star and then paid her one hundred and seventy thousand dollars to keep quiet about it. While like, his third wife was pregnant. Well, no, yeah. right after she gave birth, though. Right after she gave birth. It was okay. Right after it, she. It was. It was about a month or two after she gave birth to Baron. Yeah. Yeah, and there. So yeah, uh, I love I mean, Stormy they, Daniels. By the way, she was. She actually factually ran. <laughs> she's from Louisiana. She ran for Senate. Oh uh, yeah. For U.S. Senate against david vitter she she wound up dropping out but she she and she ran on the republican ticket and like her I campaign see. was fucking gorgeous it was amazing i really wish Listen, she had been our I senator I, it's like, I don't give a she, shit she could she could run on the campaign that no one's been closer to donald trump than her and the republicans would vote for her in droves <laughs> oh, like no, no, that no. should have been was, her motto. this was years this was years oh, this was years like ago. 2006 this was maybe 2008 I think it's yeah. a she used to try just, again she used to of, try again i think there's a lot of just like mr president i wish you would come inside me hmm. you know? Um, no, I, you uh, know what? Like, there were I, a fuck ton of women walking around Trump rallies with t shirts that said, Mr. President can grab, can grab me. This pussy. Yeah. Can grab me by this pussy. Yeah. I, yeah. Uh, you know, I'm fine but, with slimy politicians as long as, like, you're like, yeah, I smoke crack, but you know what I did? I allocated a whole bunch more acreage for the national park system. I can live with yeah. that. I don't care if uh, you're like, I love sex workers, but you know what else I love? Your right to unionize. Maybe we yeah. should also, you know, unionize sex workers and make that legal. Well, just, there's an idea. I just, I just don't give a shit about my politicians being like, you know, uh, uh, adventurous individuals in their personal lives. I just care about your I politics. I mean, it's not, it's not a big deal in some other countries. It's not a big deal. I mean, can you be the president of France if you don't have a mistress? I believe it's a requirement of, of yeah, the part of their I thought, I thought you were going like, to say Italy because that dude, what was his name? Oh, the, yeah, Italy as well. Yeah, Italy as well, man. The, 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 the guy that was like the prime minister of Italy, that dude was fucking. And the Italians mm-hmm. are like, I don't know what it, you want, man. It didn't I go. Wish he I goes, no, no, no. The, the, the Italian mm-hmm. prime minister who, 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 who had sex with prostitutes and was cheating on his wife with a bunch of women and someone just goes, you're going to have to narrow that down a bit further. <laughs> like... <laughs> But speaking of a little uh, too vague. But, but speaking of criminal presidential kids and people that are going to be royally fucked, uh, Michael Cohen was actually in an interview recently talking about uh, Trump's children and how Trump's definitely going to throw them all under the oh, bus as soon as this man. New York investigation like brings the hammer down on him. He's going oh, to throw gonna, them. He's going to throw them under the bus the same way I throw a used masturbation sock under the bed. Don't yeah. care about it at all. Yeah, it might be my future children. And I think it was Jim, Jimmy Kimmel made me laugh the hardest whenever he says, you know, it's going to be really sad whenever he uh, forgets to pin a crime on Tiffany. <laughs> oh, I but, love, I love, love, love. Speaking of Trump's children, uh, um, Trump's children, the, the, um, the, the, the insurrection fucks, uh, um, all of them sitting there on his last day in office. A lot of them were straight up thinking that he was going to pardon them. But he was going to issue a blanket yeah. pardon for everything that went on at the Capitol that day, and like now, of course he didn't. They um, don't help him. They didn't now, help him. Now the the they're, they're not, shaman, They don't have dirt on him. That's the, the, the all the, the people that he was releasing at the very end, right before he got off. Those were people that had dirt on him. He wanted to make sure that like yeah, uh, Roger yeah. Stone didn't squill. All those other people didn't squill. Those were the only people he was concerned about pardoning. But anyway, Roger Stone, I want to punch him in the mouth. He's so bad. 
Trump, Trump's never given a fuck about any of his voters, though. Roger he does Stone, not care. They're just people that make him feel good, but there's always more of those. So he doesn't care if this whole crowd freezes to death because the buses aren't there to pick him up after the rally. He just wants to putter off, go play some golf, and go to another therapy session to have more was, people cheer his name. That was one of my favorite things to happen during the Trump administration was the rally where all these people who will definitely start a civil war and they'll fight hard against the U.S. armed serv- or armed, armed forces. Uh, they died on the walk to the parking lot. Like it's <laughs> it's, but it's also yeah. but it's also the bus drivers that night found out that the campaign wasn't paying them, so they bounced. Oh shit! Trump fucking never king, pays anyone. He's famous for not paying king, people. Baby, fucking kings give all those fucking bus drivers a medal. Like that yeah. is fucking yeah. awesome. No, yeah, no. all right peace bro <laughs> 100% and it's just i talked to some of the day i was like why voting for the conservatives or being part of the conservative voting block if you're not rich it's just against fucking why you don't get anything out of it they don't give a fuck about you like nothing they do benefits you um it's, it's tribalism like they, not uh, even they the, made the, their yeah it's tribalism they live but in it's, it and, it's but, also that in america there are no poor people they're only temporarily disgraced millionaires yeah, yeah. you're not a oh, poor f- don't forget and yeah. you're not a poor fuck you're just a billionaire who's on hard you're gonna get there you're gonna be on a billionaire one day yeah 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 because if that fucking illusion went away and they went god damn i am poor and probably will be for life they'd burn the white yeah. house down yeah. Say what you want about British politics, man. The British people have a very strong sense of class consciousness. Like there was, uh, there's uh, Danny Dwyer. Do you guys know who Danny Dwyer is? He's no. this really awesome Cockney act, uh, actor. He's he's been in, he's been in a whole bunch of different stuff, but really just like plays the tough guy. Like he's sort of a he's sort of a British version of. Um, oh God, I forget the guy's name. But anyway, uh, yeah, just like. Uh, um, Danny Dwyer, I fucking love him to pieces. He's fucking hilarious. But he tweeted out one time, like right after he got like TV famous, he tweeted out, uh, he's like sitting in my living room in my fucking underwear, uh, eating a Fray Bento's pie, which is basically like their version of Marie Calendar's, like right. like you know, pot yeah. pie. Uh, so eating pot pie, right middle class now. Like <laughs> what he thought middle class was was I'm sitting in a fully detached house that has a garage in which I have a car and I'm eating a pot pie while watching cable. Like that was that was posh. I think yeah, and I think that's our problem is we don't have any fucking clash consciousness anymore, man. We we're all... starting to get it, man. Millennials fucking millennials and zenials have some fucking class consciousness. It's uh fucking uh Zoomers. the boomers the boomers fucking gaslit the fuck out of, out of Gen, uh, X. Gen X. They gaslit the fuck out of them. But I mean, yeah. it was their formative years was Reaganomics. I can't like fucking blame them for this. They got fucking brainwashed. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Fucking, it's just, I, I, you know, I was, I was in a, um, a work thing the other day that was the, it was a, it was a, um, I don't know what to describe it, but basically it was a thing where we were discussing like, um, you know, the effects of like race and class and stuff on like, teachers and students and whatnot and we were talking about someone i was like yeah i was like the american class system is brilliant in its insidiousness is that we're as stratified as india we just have everyone convinced that you don't have to stay there that it doesn't matter how shitty your life is man you just fucking play your cards right or whatever work hard you'll be a you'll be a fucking billionaire flying trump airlines eating fucking trump steaks (laughs) it's only a matter of time baby not oh You'll be the lowest caste of society, as will your kids and your children's children, and that's all they'll ever. Yeah, and that's all they'll ever be. Yeah, and like, also don't 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 forget that, like in the Americans don't have class consciousness statement, white Americans do not have class consciousness. That's true. Black yeah, Americans yeah. definitely do. Asian Americans definitely do. Like it's 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 fucking real. Like that's the shit that gave us Ben Carson and Margaret Chow. Like. And, you know, I just realize. I'm oh, sorry. Going back to the last thing, I just no, realized no. that makes the uh, the American dream like a venom that's been injected directly into the brain of the American system. Like, yeah, the that's... whole thing's always been a lie, and it's a lie that allows people to be satisfied with their current situation in life yeah. when they shouldn't be. Yeah. And so they make decisions as though that's not their situation in life yeah. when they probably should, because that's the only way their situation in life's ever going to get better. The same way that uh, you brought up earlier, man. Hey, do you guys want to do a heckin' union? Nah. I'm good. I enjoy the Walton standing on my what neck if, to get rich. What if, 
But what if I'm the multi-billionaire industrialist next time, like in a next life? (laughs) Like, dude, you're 50. You know zero millionaires. Like, I I have to, you have to explain this to people. It's like, how does someone who, who doesn't start off life as a millionaire become a millionaire? They know other millionaires. You know, like, I, I saw it a lot when I worked at Walmart. Thing, but like, there yeah, was a, yeah. when I worked at Walmart, there were a lot. Of, there were a lot of old people that worked there, and I swear to God, the store was all the same. It was like, yeah, I tell you what, I might be eighty-five years old, but I'm gonna start going to night school to be a typist, and then you'll see, Mister Wilson, I'm gonna be somebody. And I'm like, you're gonna die in about, I don't know, two weeks. Like, you don't have long. <laughs> to fucking live you're a door greeter at walmart you're 85 years old like it's over you're not no it's any minute now my number is gonna come in i just i just know it it's it's like hoover said i gotta pull myself <laughs> up by my bootstraps and you're that, like, was, that was one of the best so so in savannah we have a comedy scene and we, we we had a roast one day and it was uh one of our comedians is a is, is a 70 year old man absolutely love bill bill is amazing bill if you actually watch this which i don't know if you do um or listen to this i love you buddy but uh, like bill, if you do bill, say hi in the bill, comments bill is the, bill is one of my heroes i love that bill, man and i aspire oh, yeah, to be no, him no, no. when i'm old but one of the greatest one of the greatest burns somebody because everybody was doing a haha bill's old jokes and one of the greatest burns someone got on him was uh was uh was that uh, you guys need to stop making fun of bill okay He's a respected member of our community and has been for hundreds of years. <laughs> but he's getting old. He's getting old and he doesn't understand much anymore. In fact, he hasn't understood much since McKinley was shot. So it's, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. But no, it's, it's, it's basically what I think there's a study. Uh, I actually had an argument with somebody once and I was very mad, but trying to be right. There was a study that said that basically the income level that you are now and the income level that your parents were, your charted progress is T90 possibility that you might rise slightly in your lifetime above that. But yeah. very likely you will stay at the exact same income bracket in which you were born into that your parents made. You could go down, but your chances of going up are very, very, very futile, very slim. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it's and it, and it comes down to, and this is the question that I often pose to people who are like, capitalism is the best system in the, in the, in the known as it's always going to. Um, is I, I, I really think we need to ask the question and keep asking the question until the person gives you a straight answer. Do you believe that humanity should work for the best interest of the economy or the economy should work for the best interest of humanity? Like that's the literal question to ask. And I don't care if the answer is capitalist, socialist, communist, feudalist, uh, you know, whatever, but that we have to work it out and it has to be a long-term solution because what we're doing now is killing people and literally destroying the planet. Like it's, yeah, it's unsustainable in every way, shape. There's not a lot of time left to figure out what the ideal system is. You know what I mean? Everyone's like, ah, the great experiment. Well, Well, to keep things how they are now. um, Yeah. But America, like yeah. America is that 87 year old Walmart creator, you realize, right? Yeah. Like they're just yeah. going to be like, oh, don't worry. We're killing the planet now, but I'm going to figure it out. My numbers. If I hear one in. more person refer to us as like the great experiment, I'm like, it's been 87 fucking someone seven years we should have had some results by now <laughs> well well and it's also it's also like oh the like the myth of the founders and and the constitution is that thomas jefferson the guy who fucking drafted the declaration of independence and helped write the goddamn constitution thought that we should get a new one every 10 years yeah, yeah. Like that was a literal thing that thomas jefferson talked so, yeah, about the, 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 times the, change and the constitution needs to change with the, it like, the lionizing of the constitution uh, here's the trick that I've learned. Basically, the people that are pushed the strict constructionalist, here it is. Uh, the Bible, the word of yeah. God. It is taken on faith. It is unalterable. You cannot change a single word of it. It is God's holy word. Constitution. That same thing. Like, that's the yeah. way their brain works. And it drives me insane. Even though the Bible has been changed quite a bit uh, yeah. over the yeah. years. But that's like a whole other story. Well, the Constitution? Uh, right now. Those I'm changing yeah. it right now. Yeah. Yeah. Fuckers. But, but, anyway, yeah. so yeah, I, I like that. Uh, well, I think the name of this fucking uh, thing is just going to be American Venom. 
Perfect. I, this is I don't want the episode title. I was so proud of myself when I came up with it for like I think it was like episode 102 or something, and it or episode uh, 109 or something like that. It was like syphilitic racism down the side of a bus. Like I, <laughs> I'm so fucking proud of that title when I came up with it. I was like, that is that is fucking choice. That is uh, yes. Yep. Fucking um, go me. On. So we're definitely we're getting here towards the end. Uh, what do you guys What do you guys want to pitch real quick? Does anybody anybody want to pitch uh, the idea of capitalism, the greatest system? Uh, I will pitch the idea of yes, capitalism, the greatest system, because we at those muckrakers need for our number to come in and to become millionaires in this lifetime to reach that high high bracket. And how you can do that is buy our books, uh, Dusk Belt, uh, one and two, three will be done as soon as uh my copy editor over there is done uh proofing it. Uh, Dude. he's a bit slow. It's okay. He's eighty seven. He's a greeter. To His be fair, come in soon. I just started. <laughs> I just started another grad school degree and I got engaged. So I'm juggling a lot of stuff here. Well, but I mean, uh, 87 yeah. years ago when you first, when Hoover was, uh, was president and you first agreed to do this, you had plenty of time back. One then. of these days I'm going to read the book and my number is going to come in. But anyway, yeah, yeah. So uh, buy those books. You can find them on Amazon, find them on Kindle. Uh, if you want to share this podcast around so other people know to buy our books, you can do that. Uh, that's the buying the books best way to support us financially. Uh, share the podcast will also help. Give us likes, give us um, subscriptions. You can find us on iTunes. You can find us on SoundCloud, YouTube. You can find the videos of these episodes so you can see our faces talking at you while we um, blah. I had a friend the other day that was like, oh, you guys are on Spotify? Yeah. And I was like, yes, everywhere podcasts are, we are too. But uh, you guys are on Spotify? Yes, anybody can yeah. be on Spotify. You can also find us on Twitter at those muckrakers and email us at those muckrakers at gmail.com, where you can send us letters to uh, read here on the air, and then we'll tell you what Wesley would think of that letter. Who's Wesley? Well. Ask us that too. Bobby, you got anything you want to pitch? Bobby? Uh, it's still, still uh, plugging away on my YouTube channel, Cabin Bobbers Plays, C A P T B O B B R S space P L A Y S. Uh, we're still just playing away with uh, it's what's well, a let's play right now of City Skylines, uh, the city of Metroburg and its many little suburbs and industrial towns. Uh, trying to get better at playing the game, and I just like you know, I, I do no commentary on it because I don't have a microphone, so it's just uh, and I don't edit it, it's just like uh, 20 to 30. I think I have one hour long episode, uh, where I do a lot of stuff, uh, but yeah, we're probably about to put in a subway system. We've got light rail and trams right now, and a couple of buses, and nice, it just, just built an airport, it's looking great, it's going well. My life is going well playing video games on the internet, uh, yeah, for I think Hell I yeah. have a total of four regular viewers. So uh, not bad, hopefully not bad. they are Peter and Wilda. Um, no, <laughs> it's uh, yeah, it took a little bit of a break because shit got crazy, but uh, I'm back at it now. Got a couple episodes coming out this week, so it's okay. Yay. Those Muck Crakers only has one viewer. It's Wesley. Hi, Wesley. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't have anything to pitch. I'm just uh, I'm taking a grad school class, uh, FDR and the New Deal, and uh, there's something I kind of want to try in my personal life. FDR had this habit of he would nod vigorously and say yes, yes, when you were talking to him, which apparently yes, made. Yes which apparently made people think that he totally agreed with them. But then afterward <laughs> they'd be like, wait a minute. He didn't say he agreed to a goddamn thing, but it was too late because he was already gone again. <laughs> so I'm going to try that this week in my own personal life. Uh, one thing that Obama used to do is at the end of every day, he would sit down and eat uh, like nine walnuts while reading a few pages from some book. And uh, Penn decided to copy that for a bit, just for funsies. I don't know. Fun fact, presidential fact. Great. All right, guys. Uh, catch us oh, next week. Can we do more fun presidential facts, though? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We There's could. a we can, like, uh, we can end. We can end the fun presidential fact is that on occasion, in order to get his way, LBJ would corner someone very menacingly and then whip his dick out and just be like, "Mine's bigger than yours. You're going to pass this legislation." Like, and he named I, it. I have he named it Jumbo. In my mind. I have this image in my mind of like a Senate Republican cornered in just the blue curtains of like the Oval Office okay. as LBJ whips out his massive dong and just goes, black people have to have rights. <laughs> like, 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 holy fucking shit. Yeah, he named no, that, it, that, that, he, that's my segment of all of the past was terrible for today. He, named it, he named it Jumbo. <laughs> fucking Jumbo. Um, yeah, he named it Jumbo. He named it Jumbo. <laughs> Thank you.